You're watching Russ Cam. So listen, man, you are a uh, a pro, man, at active analysis, and uh, probably one of the biggest power users we got in the country. So uh, great. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your experiences using active analysis? All right. So yeah, we uh, basically we use it for our flagship product. So we uh, offer a Windows Forms version of it. We also use the Silverlight version of it as well oh, as cool. the Ajax version. Nice. So we give our users the ability to analyze their data in any three of those technologies. Um, we've thought about switching to WPF, but we're not sure yet because you have to use kind of a Windows Forms yeah. uh, panel for that. But um, hopefully that's something that uh, Grape City has on the horizon. Maybe they could offer something like that. But our users are big fans of it, real big fans of it. So what kind of, kind of work have you actually done? What are some of the apps that you have created with it? Okay, so uh, basically our, our main product is called InfoPlanet Visual Analyzer. Active analysis is really at the core of our product. Yeah. So users can build layouts and save them to XML. Um, we actually, from the web, we streamline a lot of that information down through JSON. And um, yeah, basically it just gives our users the ability to analyze data however they see fit. And then they save their layouts and they can share them with uh, the public. They can share them with various groups. And it just allows users to really share their analysis findings with, with anybody. Now, do you do any printing from the application? We do. Yeah, yeah. and how do you do that? Was that through? Uh... Yeah, so there's a built-in printing function in Active Analysis, uh -huh. and it's, it gives you very a lot of flexibility for displaying titles, headers, footers, yeah. uh, repeating lots of information. You can have color or black and white, so it gives them a lot of ability, and it breaks up the data in such a way that it doesn't cut them off at the pages, so yeah. it, it really helps to put the display on paper just as much as you could expect it to be. You know? Now, do you do that from your Silverlight uh, version of the app, too? There's or? an export to PDF. That's yeah, what we yeah. do. Right. That's cool. And that is a lot smaller going to right. the printer. Yeah. Put, so we export print. to PDF, and then at that point, we rely on Adobe. Cool. Whatever you have. You know, so. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. So uh, you guys are liking it quite a bit. Oh, we love it. Yeah. yeah. And not only do we love it, but our users love it. Yeah. So And they say it's, it's really changed the way that they analyze their data and report their data. Because um, really, you can drill down into essentially anything. Yeah. So even in things that aren't related, you're able to link them up, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful product. And from a developer perspective, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. I mean, you drag the control on and right. wire up the data source and let it go. You right. know, I mean, it's a. Yeah. I, mean, I know you guys do a lot of additional value, but really, mm -hmm. that's the bottom line. It's very right. easy to use. You know. Yeah, and it's it, what makes it also amazing is it really shines when it's connected to analysis services. Yeah. And there's not very many tools or even solutions at the cost that we can provide it. Oh, that's that right. Offer the as much you know power that active analysis gives because us because of the cube data uh, data source support, right? There. Right. Yeah. yeah because yeah. it actually, when the user drops fields onto these shelves, it it constructs a very optimized MDX query. Yeah. And with that, I mean, where on a SQL database where it might take five to ten seconds to execute a really complex query, yeah. active analysis returns it in kind of a blink of an eye when it's connected to analysis services. Oh, that's cool, man. So that's it's, cool. It's now, how do you uh, like this CodeMash conference this year, uh, huh? It's my favorite. It's getting bigger great. and better every year. Yeah. Yeah, what were some of the sessions you've been to? I've been doing a lot of Ruby on Rails stuff. Yeah, uh, no fooling. Just looking around, and uh, w of course, we're doing a lot of client side JavaScript. Kind of been looking at CoffeeScript, but yeah, there's a lot of brilliant client-side technology out there right now. Yeah, so. you're standing in front of a sign too. You should check out. There's a sign right there. You can hold that up. See, that's Widgmo. See that? That's right. our client-side development uh, solution. JQuery tools. UI. Yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, that's it. So we'll have you uh, check that out. Next. I, I will that for sound? sure. Yeah. Yeah, we'll hook you up. Yeah, we we uh, invest a lot of time into jQuery UI. We use it a lot on our client side. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, that's cool. Powerful library. Stay tuned for outtakes and photos after this short message. Return engagement here. You return uh, Russ Cam. You, 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 
<laughs> and uh, the only one to get dubbed with some Star Wars, you know. Uh, so very honored. Yeah, you know, that first episode, <laughs> was why we're going, no, no, great, no, no. Like you haven't heard that one before, right? <laughs> <laughs> growing up, everybody claimed to be my dad. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> Darth Vader. There Blew up Twitter with that one. That's it. So I borrowed that prop from the uh, 3D printing folks over there. <laughs> They're going to paint that up uh, a little bit with their 3D printer. Oh, that's printer. pretty cool. I mean, he looks just like my dad. So. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Go to component1.com slash Ruscam to find other episodes and check out my blog. Don't miss an issue of the Ruscam TV daily news with feeds from over 400 industry influentials. Subscribe today at ruscam.component1.com. Plus follow Ruscam TV on Twitter and Facebook.